And I said, when we come back, I'll take Baris or Olumide's thoughts on first the flags that you see, especially as you have worked with a lot of these victims, mm -hmm. the patterns that you've seen. And secondly, how do we put that side by side with not even wanting to put in efforts to make your relationship or your marriage work? Okay, uh, well, for me, there are seven character traits that are red flags. I will tell you anytime. Uh, the first are hot tempered people. The shortest cut to domestic violence and abuse is being with a hot tempered person. By hot temper, I mean someone who cannot control. Mm -hmm their passion when they're angry they you know you can't they, they have no restraint they bear fully their anger some hit at property some kick the wall some are abusive the moment you see that it's just there's no need to negotiate with mm -hmm. being a hot tempered <laughs> person the second are jealous people mm -hmm. uh, the word jealous is from the latin word gelos which means possessive and suspicious now you have people that take you as property you know uh there was a time i was on there and um a, a man said i paid her bright price she's my own you know she would do what i say jealous people uh, people think jealousy is a sign of love it is actually a symptom of insecurity yeah. the moment you you know uh you can't see somebody she must you have to check in on the person where are you video call oh yeah let me see where you are around who is that who is this you know you go out to talk to somebody i was calling you you didn't pick up you know jealousy is something uh, when you go to the book of uh, songs of solomon it says uh, wrath is cruel anger is a flood but who can stand before jealousy hmm. before uh, jealousy and envy had separate meanings but contemporary english has made jealousy also the same as envy mm -hmm. in every book you would see flee jealousy flee envy there is no jealousy is the passion of man and that is where you have the term crimes of passion it's usually crimes of jealousy a jealous lover kills mm. out of suspicion over here was it uh, last year during uh, uh was this uh, lovers day friday valentine's. Day. Valentine's. valentine's day we had 19 murders that week last year because of jealousy Crazy. when you look at uh, wow. statistics you will find out that uh, most murders were committed by intimate partners a family member someone who knew you so you are more likely to be killed by someone who knows you that, or who has had a relationship with you than any other person so jealousy is something you don't negotiate with the third is a stingy person uh, stingy means unwillingness to give you you have to have now if i don't have i can't give what i don't have but i have and i will not give they always ask the first thing is I don't have, you know, I don't, you're dating someone who will come to visit you, not even buy bread, not even, you know, they always don't have. A stingy person can go hungry so that you don't ask him for food. Wow. You know, they, they are so <laughs> unwilling to give now. Stingy people, they cohabit with you. They don't love. They cannot love because I cannot claim to love you and have what you need, but I wouldn't give. Mm. You only, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. You know, you must, giving is, you can't be with stingy people. You will inherit debt. They would not, school fees of the children, 100,000, uh, half 40,000, they never have. So you end up working extra hard to always cover the balance. I, I, you know, we don't really have time a stingy person you you would not they say when you want to know a stingy man look at his wife when you want to know a stingy woman look at her children they are not they don't even dress well they you you know they never celebrate anything it's a waste of money you can't you know you can't buy anything that they, they, they can't even buy stuff for themselves how much more for the so for the better if i don't love myself how can i love you so uh, hot tempered uh, jealous thing the, then the malicious people now i always say be careful of those people that don't forgive easily they remember 
they mm. remember what you you know you have to apologize apologize they would block you they would not respond to your text not pick your calls you would apologize over a week are you still angry you know be careful mm. of those that don't forgive easily deep people and even after they have forgiven when you do anything wrong in future they will still refer to that that was how you did it uh, you know last year i even have someone who will give you the weather report it was raining that day that you, you know then the other side to malice is uh, legally when you say it was an act of malice that means it was intentional mm-hmm. there are some people that malice comes out of envy at times for example you marry someone who your income becomes uh, contention you can't do better than they you can't earn more than they next thing they tell you to stop working because anything you do is it because you are earning Uh, a lady once came to us she was promoted in her office and um, given an official card you know she ran home she was like ah you know i was promoted the husband was like why is it always you they are promoting in that office you must be doing something you and that your (laughs) boss don't come and pack any official she she said she couldn't pack the official car here so some people you know your progress is a problem look at what got yourself into problems he had a dream and he dared to say his dream his brothers gathered against him what got came to kill abel because he offered a better sacrifice there are some people that you're good you can't you added advantage you cannot problem. you know it it slights them mm-hmm. it is a problem so you need to understand and be with when you see someone who cannot celebrate your progress mm-hmm. that is always reserved about it that is a red flag then the liar those you know you can't be with someone who lies there's a pathological liar there is a, a, a okay. manipulative liar a pathological <laughs> liar eh? a pathological liar lies for no they were not in trouble but that you need to say just they just natural. lie it comes yeah. naturally they just lie then the manipulative liar uh, lies to get what they want from you. For example, I'm here now and I'm like, ah, I just need to get um, 3,000 from my time here. I just be like, ah, when I was coming, was my car just climbed one time. You know, they just create a hmm. story around something. Mm-hmm. And, and that is how a lot of people like create a scenario to get you into a relationship mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. So you need to, there is no, you know they lie. You know, everybody lies. You understand? Uh, I always, maybe you say, ah, where am I now? I would give myself maybe 10 kilometers. Maybe I'm still in Sabo. I would say, ah, I'm on third Milan bridge. You know, that, those are, but for you to be called a liar, that means your lie <laughs> surpasses the <laughs> threshold of normal, Liars. everyday, you know, that means <laughs> you, you, you take it a step. When you see that this person <laughs> lies, you need to, a lady got married to a gentleman, an engineer, you know, five years in the marriage before she realized that the engineer would, did not even go to the university. Huh. And she was a double a master's degree holder. You understand, he, he was called an engineer because he sells building materials. materials. <laughs> building you engineers, well, it's well, what he called he them. Was, so when he says engineer, and he, you know, he would be talking, he's a graduate until, you know, uh, then I always talk about the jobless. That is number six. For a man, it always affects the man where all you see is beauty. Mm. You marry, you just see somebody and you say, I've seen my wife just because of it. And the person has no advantage. Unemployment, the person is unemployed. Two heads are better than one, definitely. And they say, uh, for when one falls the other would raise but woe unto him who is alone now that alone is not woe unto him who stands alone but woe unto him who is alone in responsibility because when you fall nobody to carry you now you marry someone who all they have to give you is their body there is no finances there are no ideas there is you just you are just with someone because you love her or love how she looks or it's always the looks <laughs> then you know the guy is handsome or probably sexually proactive and you marry for that now there is a problem and looks just fade away In first pregnancy it's gone eight is now nine you know before before you know the looks just goes but when you are alone you see when i tell people you can't marry a jobless person they say they have prospects. I'm into. The, let us see the prospects. Mm. 
unemployment is not rewarded by marriage unemployment is cause to get a job but then you have the unemployable that means they have neither the skill talent or qualification to get a job you know there's unemployed where you have the skill you have the talent but you don't have a job and you're looking for but then there's the unemployable that is they have nothing no qualification to get a job some it is their character that makes them unemployable last year we have someone who lost three jobs in two months because of attitude and that is the apple of another's eye the problem is that you will carry the burden of and it is always do you know how how difficult it is right now for someone you will pay the rent then you had there to have children you pay the school fees then you would clothe them you would do everything and then for yourself with no help except you're from a rich family or you have something somewhere then the last are proud people mm. those that have the exceedingly high opinion about themselves the problem with proud people is that they are never wrong so they never apologize because they are always right even after they've been told they are wrong narcissism is the full expression of pride uh -huh. so the issue you talk about narcissists they are proud people they are the that is the full expression of pride so these seven traits i tell that it never it never ends well the hot tempered the jealous the stingy the malicious the liar the jobless and the proud once you see this please excuse me sir before we went on that break i said i was going to ask now that you have mentioned all these red flags and you started by telling us some of the tactics that the abuser uses mm -hmm. on the abuse such that maybe it makes them makes it difficult for them to identify these flags absolutely okay. a wholesome person is someone who is whole in terms of their physical um dimension their emotional mental parts and then their spiritual you know dimension mm. a person who is strong emotionally or mentally someone who grew up in a maybe in a healthy environment where they were able to learn to express themselves, learn to self-regulate and manage their emotions. They've been able to learn to place boundaries. When they notice someone is invading their space, they are quick to, hey, you know, you need to back off a bit. You know, I have my needs, you have your needs. You know, you need to we need to respect each other. I mean, yes, we're going out, we're dating, but hello, you know, there's still supposed to be a line. The truth is abusers will never go for people who are confident mm. and when i mean confident i don't mean false confidence because a lot of us portray false confidence because we want to look the part but i'm talking about people that you know they understand boundary they place boundary they maintain boundary and so that's such a person is quick to say things show their paranoia mm -hmm. tell them that they own you it, it, and it, then you, ask you, you a question, yeah sorry yeah when we say boundaries now to you mm -hmm. you know to them what is boundary? all right so let me break it down like you say so thank you very much now this is what i mean you know how you you're going on a date with your boyfriend and as you're getting dressed and you're about to go out and he says and you say oh you're not even telling me how I look. I mean, no women always like that affirmation. And he says, first of all, you look maybe like a whore. Or you look like you're thirsty. <laughs> you know, you look, you don't look, you are you are you trying to get the attention of the other men there? Or are you following me? You don't you're not showing that you're an extension of me. You can see how how I look. I'm dressed very responsible. Why are you looking this way? That's one example. That's somebody who is trying to let you know. But in that way, the person has thrown a glass boost. Let me put it that way. Has emotionally incapacitated you. You understand? And also put you in a place where you're feeling very, you know, your confidence Defunded. has been shattered. Yes. And so you have those different glass boosts com coming into the relationship at different times. You can go out to eat and you're both eating, having a very nice dinner. In your mind, you're having a nice dinner and it just says, why are you chewing like mm -hmm. ah ah like have some class you know you know all those very little bit of here and there so you that's why you know at the beginning i said something like you don't know when the line is drawn mm -hmm. 
you know so you then you start trying to you become a bit more conscious of your self image because you keep thinking okay i'm not i'm not behaving myself or oh, i'm at fault i'm to blame so there are always a little here and there okay you know let me allow but it's as if you wanted to say something <laughs> quickly <You know>? uh, <laughs> examples were like okay um when you people say okay um i think the problem we have is that people are not taught on how to date mm -hmm. the first step in dating you know uh, someone asked one of these old uh, philosophers said what is the secret to life and by name socrates socrates said the secret to life is this man know thyself mm -hmm. the first thing is you need to know the first step is knowing who you are if you are emotional then you know that you cannot be with someone who speaks flagrantly because you will be hurt if you are hot tempered then you cannot be with another hot tempered person who because two goats would always you need to know how you are for when i was with my wife when we were agreeing i said what are your deal breakers she said don't hit me if you hit me i will kill you and i will go to the police I will go to jail that no man can hit her again and um, I said me don't shout at me that's my deal breaker the moment you start shouting raising you know I'm gone I, I can't you've lost me so I know who I am boundaries now are those things you do to protect who you are for example the boundary of everyone should be abused the moment someone tells you you are stupid I think that is just it I mean thank you very much and that is but here we like to shalaye. Well, the reason I said, you know, it was traffic and, you know, the mm -hmm. radio and people will not tell you, hey, it is only one time he has said it. Mm -hmm. The issue here is that we are not taught by the very institutions that should teach us, that is, at home, churches, schools, on what to look out for. What are those traits to avoid? But there are a lot of things to look out for okay and you cannot cover everything yes a level of self-awareness works you know you said something about somebody who is very hot tempered should not go out with another hot tempered person and then we're coming back to where we are if a hot tempered person constantly goes out with someone who is even tempered if the evil tempered person does is not as exactly. you know then the abuse starts and, and so, exactly. so we're still exactly. that is still going on so the, the the issue here is knowing yourself respecting your boundaries and ensuring that you also communicate your boundaries to people which means on the first date if a guy tells me he doesn't like what i'm dressed i'm like oh thank you for sharing that opinion he's taking but when you not to insult me or start saying things like no 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 no, hold on there you okay. already said you're not comfortable with this this is me i own my body you understand so let, let's draw that line i'm not an extension of you that's where you let the person know i'm not an extension don't yes we're going now doesn't mean that People are going to say, so you know, that's where insecurity comes in. When you're like, ah, don't dress like this, so they won't know that we are together. Or I won't, they, they would look at you like they would look at me. You know, you see where the insecurity, so insecurity on one person's part, and the other person not even being able to own up and say, this is who I am through and through, being self aware, but also, you know, having a, the ability to be assertive. Yeah. When you're having somebody whose communication style is being aggressive, always aggressive, and the person, other person is passive. And just gives in or the person is passive aggressive there will be problems so it's there's a lot of issues going on but the truth remains that for an ab abusive relationship not to occur or for it to be managed each person should deal with their weaknesses you know and all of that if you come into a, a relationship broken the relationship has failed from the start that's just the truth you know so let's that you can't you can't name it all you can't yeah. see all the red flags. Yeah. The truth is even normal, regular people like you and I have our... We do some things based on where we are coming from, which is not exactly a red flag per se, but it's how we grew up. It's how we, we do things. Mentality. And so when somebody tells you, your, your, your partner says, oh, you shouldn't have said that. This is what it meant. This is how it makes me feel. At that point is where you say, oh, I apologize. You draw your line. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry for crossing that line. So that's what healthy, healthy relationships have red flags. Healthy relationships have issues, but when we're able to communicate, respect each other, trust each other, and individually work through our own challenges, then we create a wholesome relationship. Everybody's coming from a different background. Thank you, you so know? much. Now, in very few, very, very few words for both of you, I need you to say 
how a person who has been battered now you are saying this for people who still have their you know their everything is still intact mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. those who have been battered mm -hmm. in abusive relationships mm -hmm. how can they leave very few words the first thing they need to do is to reach out to someone reach out to someone because at that point in time they probably don't have the financial stability they don't know they don't know how to leave but they need to understand that there's somebody out there that cares for them that's by themselves they need to consciously build up their support system that has been broken the isolation has taken place so build Encourage up them. oh yes who is there for them is that like no you know in, in really no no one is an island mm. that's the truth no one of us when you have been but when you come into a relation from family and friends. so you begin that's what i mean by the first step you do is to begin to reach out to people you reach out to the person close the person one person that can come to mind if one person just reach out to the person this is what i'm going through I, if, if i'm going through so much and i'm broken and battered the first person i will i will call will not be an advocates group you understand i'll just remember one of my old friends that I haven't been in touch with connect connect from connecting you you are able to boost that internal that your mental battered person is not just battered physically a battered person is probably yes and it's probably suicidal and just think i'm alone in this world nobody even cares about me i am no a nobody i've seen this happen time and time again that person just needs that first thing is that connection the connection builds a bit of mental strength then you that's when you start thinking of okay maybe gathering documents if you have maybe joint accounts she you're sharing certain things you know all of those legal you know yeah. parts and also you know gathering maybe your children's stuff and all that and money and all that but first of all you need to connect with someone who you know who can help you at that first instance or so in 30 seconds. i know we'll probably have a different perspective <laughs> oh well i think that you should leave i think you should leave um i mentioned that uh, between january and march we buried 64 women lost to domestic violence and abuse i don't think that you actually have time i've been with someone who was to be with come for another they meet with me and you know in just seven days the person was yeah. gone so you leave there is no uh i believe just leave Run. pack your bags your children if they're infants and leave then we'll start talking about the others after you have left. Mm. So where do you leave to? So you came from somewhere. So that's why you need to connect first. Connect with one person. Then you know the sense of, okay, now I have there's somebody, so I know someone, you have a knowing that there's someone with you in your mind. Mm. You leave, you, you know, you and I can stay here for thousands of years to say leave, leave. But we know, that's why you have you have this so report. I mean, time. To time. <laughs> we are totally out of time. So, they will not leave. Thank you. That's the truth. Right now, we need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being a part of.